Hi, I welcome you to this video presentation. Here, you will have a better understanding about the basic concepts of income tax. So let's hop in. So what is income tax? Well, there is no straightforward meaning or definition for income tax given anywhere. So according to me, I would rather say that tax on income earned by persons during the previous year is taken for computation in the assessment year. So this would be the meaning for income tax. Okay, here you can see that there are five keywords that is highlighted to be understood. So the first keyword is tax. So what is tax? Tax is a charge or levy or some people even understand that as a financial burden while very few will understand that as a financial obligation. We should know that tax is levied on the income earned by a person and one should also understand that these taxes are paid to the government. So why should you pay taxes to the government? Well, in any democratic country, it is the government that is providing all the basic necessities. It also provides infrastructural needs, healthcare facilities, so on and so forth to the public or to the people of that particular country. It is the sole responsibility of the government. Okay, now what does the government does with this money? And we should understand that taxes are the main and vital source of income or revenue generation source for the government. The government provides various necessities such as laying down the roads, they spend money in generation of power, they provide food for the economically weaker section of society, they also take up the responsibility of providing free education, they also sup support and supply necessities for agriculture, sometimes free agriculture or waiving the uh, loan or interest. So it is for this purpose that as a responsible citizen of the country it becomes a financial obligation and a duty that every citizen should abide by. So this is what each and every person should understand about tax. Now there are two types of taxes, direct tax and indirect tax. So direct tax from name itself it is very clear that the taxes are directly paid to the government wherein indirect taxes one person collects a tax from the other person and he remits a tax to the government. So he does not pay directly to the government. He collects from one person and pays it to the government. Direct tax is levied on the income earned by the person. While indirect tax is in paid on the income earned by the seller or the service provider. Well, we should know that direct tax is paid only beyond a certain limit. A very famous example for direct tax is income tax, wherein indirect tax there is no limit. There are only some percentages. Okay, for example, zero percentage, five percentage, twelve percentage, eighteen percentage, like that, and it varies according to the nature. Few examples of in indirect tax are goods and service tax, famously called GST, excise duty, customs duty. So these are the examples of in and after. This video will give you a clear understanding about what is called income tax. So let's move ahead. Like I already told you the meaning for income tax. So tax, we had a discussion about that. Income, now we are going to discuss what is called income. Okay. So from the layman point of view, what is called income? So he would rather say that it is money earned. So he goes to work and his employer will give some money that is called income for him. The Income Tax Act. So what is this Income Tax Act? Suddenly where did it, did it come from? So Income Tax Act came into effect on 1st April 1962. Each and every year income tax gets updated. The finance minister prepares the list of rules that need to be adhered by the taxpayers and that will be presented to the parliament and the house of the parliament will accept the, these rules and regulations and it gets updated. So income tax came into force on 1st April 1962 and each and every year it gets updated. So this is called income tax act. 
Now, according to this Income Tax Act, whatever income that is earned by a person is categorized into five different categories. Firstly, salaries. So, what is called salary? A simple meaning is what? Reward for work done. So, you take up an employment, the employer will pay money to the employee for the work that is done. It is also called reward for work done. So, that is called salary. Okay, now you don't have salary. Okay, now what is the next source? Say for example, you have a house property. So, if you have a house property, you can either let it out or you can have it for your own purpose. So, if you let it out, you will be called as a landlord and the person to whom it is let, it out, let out is called tenant. The tenant will pay rent. So, this rental income will be called as income from house property. Okay, now a person does not have salary and does not have house property. So, what is the next one? So, this particular person might buy and sell goods. So, if you buy and sell goods, obviously there will be profit. So, that profit will be called as income from business. Okay, now that is also not there. So, what is called profession? Who are called professionals? So, doctors, auditors, lawyers, engineers are called professionals. Any money earned by these people will be called as income from profession. No? Okay. Now you don't have these three sources. So what next? Okay. Now you already have an agricultural land. Okay. And you also have some bonds with you. You also have some uh, capital asset with you. Okay. Now you are in need of money. You are going to sell that particular asset. And if you sell the asset, you will definitely earn a gain out of it. So that income from sale of asset will be called as capital gains. Okay, now a person does not have any of these source. So what next? But anyway, he is earning. So or anything other than these four heads of income, if it is earned by a person, that will be called as income from other sources. So according to Income Tax Act, there are five major heads of income. Okay, now if you add all these five heads of income, it will be called as gross total income. I would like to make uh, another emphasis over here. We are learning what is called income tax. So in that first keyword was tax. Second keyword was income. Now the th third keyword is persons. Who are called persons? So this will bring you a clear understanding about who are called persons. Okay. First type of person is called individual. So Mr. X, Mr. Y, you, me, we are called as individuals. Okay. Second one is Hindu undivided family. So we all know in one particular big family, you will have grandmother, you will have grandfather, you will have uncle, you will have aunt, you will have mother, father, sister, brother, in-laws, all these people together in one particular family will be called as Hindu undivided family. And in that family, the head of the family will be called the Karta and all the other members will be called co -parsinus. And if any Hindu undivided family is carrying on a business, it will be categorized as a separate person. Thirdly, company. An artificial person who, which is formed for carrying on the business is called a company and is registered in the Companies Act. So, Nissan is a very good example and Tata Motors is a good example for company. There are various companies in India. Fourth is firm. So, two or more people who have come together for carrying on the business and with an intention to earn profit and share the profit or losses. So, that's called a firm. Now, the fifth type of person is association of person or body of individual. From the name itself, it is very clear that association means it's a combination of any of the persons which is listed here. So, that is called association of person. A very good example is MarkFed marketing federation it is constituted in each and every state and that particular organization will come under the category of association of person or body of individuals the next type of type of person is local authority like gram panchayat municipality corporation this comes under the category of local authority finally artificial juridical person universities colleges schools all these things will come under the category called artificial juridical person so that brings us to the third keyword. So this understanding of the third keyword called persons, there are seven type of persons. So let's move on to the next. So again, here 
we are going to have an emphasis or an understanding about the fourth and the fifth keyword that is previous year and assessment year. So let us put it together. As you can see here, both are considered as financial year. So when it is in year, it has 12 months. Starts from 1st April and ends on 31st March. The year in which the income is earned is called previous year and the year in which assessment procedure is carried out for payment of taxes is called assessment year.